Filing for bankruptcy doesn't have to be financial suicide, and it definitely shouldn't mean that you can't purchase a home. When you think about the statistics for bankruptcy in the United States, over 700,000 people on average per year in the U.S. end up filing for protection under the bankruptcy code, and 61% of those are for medical reasons. Only 5% of people that file bankruptcy would be classified as overspenders. So bankruptcy doesn't have to be a dead end, and it doesn't have to mean that you can't purchase a home. What I'd like to share with you today is how to purchase a home even if you filed for bankruptcy. So the first thing you need to understand is what type of bankruptcy it was that you filed. There are two very common types of bankruptcy in the United States. There's actually three, but the two most common are Chapter 7 bankruptcy and Chapter 13 bankruptcy. Now a Chapter 7 bankruptcy is when you have all of your debt simply eradicated most of the time, meaning you're not paying it back, you're not entering into uh, payment plans or anything like that. Whereas, as you probably guessed, a Chapter 13 bankruptcy means that you established a payment plan uh, to pay back your lenders as part of that Chapter 13 bankruptcy, and the bankruptcy goes on for as long as the payment plan is, is going, versus on a Chapter 7, it's usually done in about four to six months. So those are the two different primary types of, cha of bankruptcies that most people file. There is also a Chapter 11, but it is very uncommon, so we're not going to dig too much into that in today's video. Now, one other thing to consider is when you're talking about being able to get a home loan after filing for bankruptcy, you have to also consider whether or not a home or a mortgage rather, not necessarily a home, but a mortgage was included in that bankruptcy. Because if you did include a mortgage in your bankruptcy, it's going to likely lengthen the period of time you have until you can purchase a home again with a few exceptions. And so uh, those are some of the things you need to know kind of right up front. What I'd like to do now is go ahead and dive into each loan program and what each of them require from you as far as how long you have to wait and what you need to do in order to be able to purchase a home after you filed for bankruptcy. All right, so the first loan program we're going to look at is Fannie Mae. Now, Fannie Mae is part of the conventional loan umbrella. So Fannie Mae says that if you filed a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, whether it was discharged or dismissed, that your waiting period is four years. Now, what is a discharge and what is a dismissal? A discharge means that you completed the bankruptcy successfully. A dismissal means that it was not finished. So either way, whether you started and didn't finish or you totally finished, your waiting period with Fannie Mae on a Chapter 7 bankruptcy is going to be seven years. On a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, they give a little leniency. And if you actually have that bankruptcy discharge, meaning you successfully completed your payment plan with a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, then your waiting period is only two years. Now, if that chapter 13 was dismissed, meaning you didn't finish it for whatever reason, that waiting period with Fannie Mae is gonna be four years. And if you filed multiple bankruptcies, meaning this wasn't your first time filing a bankruptcy, that waiting period is now gonna be increased to five years. Now, as part of the conventional loan umbrella, you also have Freddie Mac, but in this regard, they are exactly the same as Fannie Mae. Four year waiting period for discharge or dismissal on chapter seven, two year for discharge on chapter 13, four year for dismissal, meaning you didn't complete, complete the program. And if this is not your first time filing for bankruptcy, it is also going to be a five year waiting period if this is your, you know, if you, if you file for bankruptcy multiple times. So Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are your two conventional loan providers. So if you need a conventional loan or you're going after a conventional loan, then these are going to be the guidelines and the waiting periods that you're going to be restricted to when trying to obtain that loan. However, there's good news. The rest of the loan programs that we're going to discuss in this video today are much more lenient than these two. So stay tuned. All right, so let's talk about FHA, which is gonna be one of the more lenient programs for you if you have recently had a bankruptcy. In fact, it's probably one of the ones we'd recommend the most, um, especially if you can't afford to wait the four years, which you can, uh, in order to purchase a home. Then FHA is gonna be one of the programs you strongly need to consider because it's going to be much more lenient uh, as you're gonna see. So with a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, if you filed for the Chapter 7 bankruptcy, whether it was dismissed or discharged, the waiting period is only two years from the from the discharge date, and we're gonna get into that after after this, but but the waiting period from for the Chapter 7 bankruptcy is only two years. Now, a Chapter 13 is gonna be even more flexible than a Chapter 7. When you file a Chapter 13, you can do one year from the discharge date 
if manually underwritten or two years if you try if you need to do automated approval and there are some reasons why you wouldn't be able to go manual and, and you would need to go auto automated um, I can't cover all that in the video but um, most people can go manual um, you can also with FHA here's something really cool if you filed a chapter 13 and you're still in the payment plan then with your trustees permission you can also get a FHA loan if you get their permission after you've made 12 months of on-time payments. So that's a really, really cool thing because it doesn't, it means that in a chapter 13, you don't have to wait five years or four years or three years or however long that payment plan is in order to purchase a home. You can get your trustees permission, get it written and documented by the court, provide that to us, and then we can use that to do a manual underwrite on that chapter 13 bankruptcy and get you in a home that you've really, you've been wanting for a long time. We literally just, we do two or three of these a month. And so it's really, really cool to be able to help people do that. So those are just some of the ways that the FHA loan are more flexible than the USDA loan. Uh, the other thing is that there's no waiting period or additional waiting period if you file bankruptcy more than once. So it is strictly the one in two years that we just discussed. Now the next loan program that I want to discuss is the VA loan. How to get a VA loan with a bankruptcy. Now, one of the things you need to understand is that there's a lot of big box VA lenders that you see advertising online and maybe you've been working with them and that's why you've come and found this video. You, if you have a bankruptcy and it's anything outside of what we're gonna discuss, then you're likely gonna be told that you don't qualify by one of these big bank uh, VA lenders. So what I want you to know is that the VA says that chapter seven and chapter 13 bankruptcies are both two years from the discharge date. That's right, they're both two years from the discharge date. But what I also want you to know is that VA is very flexible within their credit requirements. For instance, we can, we can underwrite VA loans down to a credit score of 500 when many of these big box stores are gonna tell you you need a 620, which is just crazy. Uh, the VA is the most flexible program. Their goal is to help as many veterans as possible get into homes, and that's our goal as well. And so with manual underwriting, if your bankruptcy was a result of an extenuating circumstance, which we're also gonna cover here in a little bit, you have some flexibility in what you can what you can do in order to be uh, qualified for that home loan uh, in a sooner time frame than even the two years. So, as a general rule of thumb, with a bankruptcy, you're going to have that two year waiting period with the Chapter 13 or a Chapter 7. They don't really make much of a distinction as far as the two bankruptcies are concerned. But two years is not a long time because that gives you time to boost your credit score, get it where it needs to be so your rate can look good or, or uh, you know, you can have an affordable payment and all that good stuff. But, but two years is what the VA says you need to do. But remember, there's always extenuating circumstances. And if you want to know more about that, Stay tuned to the end of the video where I'm going to discuss that. All right, so let's talk about one of our other favorite programs because like the VA loan, it's also a zero down payment program. Let's talk about USDA Rural Development. The USDA Rural Development Program is a little bit more strict than FHA when it comes to Chapter 7 bankruptcies. They say that the waiting period is going to be three years on a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, but they're lenient on Chapter 13s. They will allow you to get a chapter 13 uh, bankruptcy, you can get a home after your chapter 13 has been dismissed for one year. And like FHA, if you've made a year of on-time payments, you also have an argument to be able to get the loan once you've made 12 months of on-time payments. So again, not quite as flexible as VA, not quite as flexible as FHA, but still very flexible compared to conventional with regards to being able to get a mortgage after you filed for bankruptcy. Now let's talk about jumbo loans, right? A jumbo loan is gonna be any loan over the county loan limit, and that changes every year. Right now it's around 600,000. That goes up every year quite substantially. So, you know, depending on when you're watching this video, it may be higher than that. But whatever your county loan limit is, you can Google this. A jumbo loan is gonna be any loan where you're borrowing more than that. And so with a jumbo loan, they're also gonna kind of be strict like the conventional loans as far as the bankruptcy waiting periods go. While underwriting guidelines do fluctuate from lender to lender, you should expect at least a four year waiting period. Some may make you go as long as seven years when obtaining a jumbo loan. So if, if you filed bankruptcy and it hasn't been four years, then a jumbo loan may not be the right fit for you at this time, at least not a agency jumbo loan, meaning a conforming product jumbo loan, right? It's probably not gonna be the best fit for you at this particular moment because of the waiting period. You either have to wait or you'll have to find a different product like non-QM, which we're gonna talk about next, or you know, purchase a home that's a little bit of a lower amount.
Now, finally, you've got non-QM or what they call portfolio loans. These are loans that are not underwritten by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. They're not sold um, to these large servicers. They don't have the same rules to follow. With a non-QM loan, you can get a, a, a mortgage out of bankruptcy as soon as one day out of bankruptcy from discharge. So it provides a really, really flexible option to be able to purchase a home. The drawback to that Larger down payments are definitely going to be required. For most non-QM loans, you should expect to put at minimum 10, probably closer to 20 or 30 percent down whenever thinking about purchasing a home, you know, one day out of bankruptcy or or less than these uh, standard waiting periods that you see with the last loans that we've discussed. So it is uh, it is an option, but you do need to have more money down. You're also going to get a premium interest rate, right? It's not going to be the lower interest rates that you see advertised online or wherever you're looking. It's going to be a, a, an interest rate that reflects the risk that you are to that bank. However, it's still really important to consider that the benefits of owning a home usually far outweigh the benefits of continuing to rent or doing whatever it is that you're doing. And there's always refinancing down the road whenever you meet whatever threshold that lender has as far as not having to pay a fee to refinance out of that higher interest loan. So, so there is a program as, as like I said, is where you can get a, you can get a home mortgage one day after bankruptcy. There are some trade-offs as well as you need to have a bit of a stronger credit score and need to have a bit more down payments, but that's going to pretty much cover the different waiting periods that you're going to see whenever purchasing a home after bankruptcy. So the, the real big thing that I want you to understand is that if you've been d told no, like, you filed bankruptcy, you can never buy a home. That's crazy. And it's probably a bank that told you that or a credit union or, you know, someone that has rules that that aren't in the book, right? They added rules to the book that aren't in the book. They're, they've added overlays is what they're called on top of their guidelines. And so if you've been told that, but you fall within one of these waiting periods that we've just discussed in this video, then I would encourage you to reach out to us and let us get you connected with a loan officer that can help you purchase a home using one of these programs, even though you filed bankruptcy in the past. And so uh, it's really important that you don't always just take no for an answer, especially if you're dealing with an online lender or you're dealing with a bank or somebody that's a bit more strict, because as a broker uh, and local lenders can often find you better options than what you can find at the place that does auto loans and credit cards and does your checking account and savings account, you know, or has inexperienced loan officers working for them like the big online lenders do. So, so definitely consider that because we'd love to help you if you find yourself in that position. We'd love to be able to show you ways in which you can either purchase a home now or when you could actually purchase that home. Now, one additional thing, and I alluded to it at the beginning that I want to discuss is what happens if you've got a mortgage tied into that bankruptcy and your mortgage gets foreclosed on or you've had a short sale or something like that. So what you need to know about that is that your waiting period will most likely be longer. So if you had a foreclosure as a result of the bankruptcy, your waiting period with FHA, USDA, and these other programs, not USDA, but FHA, uh, and uh, it's going to go to four years. So, so that's a special situation that you need to work with a loan officer on to try to find the best program for you because some of them won't include it as a separate event and some will. But just expect that your waiting period will be somewhere between three to four years if you had a foreclosure within your uh, bankruptcy. And it's very similar for short sales and um, deed in lieu and, and all those different types of things. Pretty much most banks treat them as all the same. The, the main difference is that conventional loans treat a foreclosure with a different waiting period. You gotta wait seven years to get a conventional loan if you had your loan foreclosed on. But FHA and, and of course, like the others, they're, they're more flexible with that four-year waiting period. So I just wanted to touch on that really quickly so that you understood um, you know, that there is a little difference if you had your mortgage foreclosed on, but we can also work with you on that and kind of help you understand that. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about is how you can avoid the waiting periods. Like, is there ever a situation where you don't have to become subject to those waiting periods and you can still buy a house? And the answer is yes, they call that extenuating circumstances and it's available for use on all of these loan programs, but primarily FHA, USDA, and VA. And so I wanna read the definition of an extenuating circumstance so that I can make sure I get it right uh, as well as properly educate you. And so they define an extenuating circumstance as a non-recurring event that resulted in income or extreme increase, income loss or extreme increase in financial obligations. It must have been temporary, out of your control, and unlikely to happen again. 
uh, a lot of times the scenarios that you see are going to be serious illness or death of someone who was a wage earner in your family, like a husband or a spouse or something like that, or a reduction or a loss of your income. Now, they do make a distinction that divorce is not a, a reasonable, uh, is not an extenuating circumstance. So they do make a distinction about divorce. And uh, but there is a, there is times where things happened in your life, especially when you consider that 61 percent of people that file for bankruptcy do so for medical reasons. There are times in your life where this is going to be the case and, and you may be able to qualify for one of these extenuating circumstances. The really important thing that I want you to know is that there's no guarantee. So at this point, we have to tell a story. We have to provide documents that show what happened. And then it is up to the underwriter to choose whether or not to allow us to move forward with that extenuating circumstance or not. I can tell you that most underwriters, despite how people may depict them, are caring and do want to help. And if it is within their uh, ability to do so, then they will likely do it, even if it does require you to provide more stuff. So, so there are times whenever you have filed for a bankruptcy and you don't have to be subject to that waiting period known as the extenuating circumstance. Let's just address a couple of other issues like when does the waiting period start? The waiting period starts whenever your bankruptcy is discharged or dismissed. So when you file for bankruptcy is not when the waiting period starts it it is when it's discharged so whenever you've gone through the entire process and you've gotten a notice of discharge that is when your bankruptcy is considered complete or when it's been dismissed the date of dismissal is going to be when that waiting period typically is considered to be uh you know the waiting period is going to start there is some exceptions to that when you've had a foreclosure as a part of it it may be whenever the foreclosure is finalized that's when that waiting period is going to start so just some helpful info there on that. Another thing you need to know is what documents you're going to need to provide us in order to move forward. And we're going to need that notice of discharge, which is going to have the court signature on the, that your bankruptcy has been finalized. And a lot of times we're going to need the schedule of creditors that were written off in that bankruptcy so we know how to underwrite the loan. So those two things are going to be provided to you typically with, by your attorney once your bankruptcy is finalized. And it's those are going to be required by the lender to determine when that bankruptcy uh, waiting period started, as well as who was written off and what needs to be counted against you and all of that fun stuff. So so those are the documents that you're going to need in order to uh, in order to move forward with a loan when you file bankruptcy. So hopefully today you've been able to see that buying a home after bankruptcy is attainable. It is achievable. It isn't something that's not possible. Bankruptcy is not a death sentence. It's not a, you can't buy a house for 10 years or seven years or all the other stuff that we hear about because, you know, uninformed opinions seem to be the loudest sometimes. If you filed for bankruptcy and you've listened to this information and you know that you're within these waiting periods, but your bank is telling you no, or your credit union or the online lender is saying, I'm sorry, I can't do it. We'd love to help you if you want to reach out to us. And if we're not in your state, if we're not able to do business in your state, we can connect you with loan officers across the country who are understand these guidelines and are knowledgeable just like us and work with lenders that will accept you. So I hope this has been helpful. I look forward to working with as many people as we can because bankruptcy shouldn't be a life sentence of, of bad financial choices. So I'm Channing Moore. I'm the broker owner of Bayou Mortgage, and I look forward to talking to you soon.